Today we're going to look at high powered motors and this is an excellent reason to look at Tinkercad because with Tinkercad if you blow something up all you've done is ruined a Tinkercad virtual Uno rather than your real Arduino. So in this simulation I'm using a 12 volt input and I'm controlling a motor and we're using the L293 chip so this is a motor driver a H-bridge chip that is isolating the Arduino from this high powered voltage so we are inputting 5 volts into this circuit but only to power the chip the motor is getting power through the chip from this power supply so this 12 volts is not gonna impact the Uno we're not gonna let the smoke out of the Arduino we're controlling the speed by setting this enable pin so that can be high or low so you could just connect it to 5 volts but using PWM we can set the speed you can see it's got a RPM here, it's upside down, but that is set full. That is the fastest it can go. It's actually going clockwise and then counterclockwise. And these two pins, nine and six, are going into input one and input two. And the way those work is, if you want it to go forwards, you make pin one high and pin two low and that is acting like five volts in ground and if you want to go in reverse you reverse it you make the first one ground and the second one high so as I said we are providing ground and five volts and that is supplying the chip you need even if you're not using the second motor pins here so you can do the reverse of there and power another motor you still need to enable this high the actual input though is this pin that's getting 12 volts in at this stage but you can provide whatever your motor needs and this means you can control motors that are much more powerful than what the Arduino on its own can cope with if we look at this simple code here, as I said, all we're doing is rotating clockwise and then rotating anti-clockwise. But we've got the three pins, which is the enable pin on 11. We've got motor one and motor two. All three are outputs. And then we tell the enable pin to be high. So 255 or five volts, which means just go full on and then as I said before, we set pin one and pin two, motor one and motor two, to high and low. We wait, and then we go low and high. If we look at my actual Arduino code, we're actually using serial to command <laughs> enter F or R. Sorry, we're using the serial monitor to command the motor, and then we can set the speed. So again, same pins, 11, 9, and 6. We set the power to 0 to start off with. We start the serial. We set the outputs. If there is serial available, first we read the direction, which should be an F or an R. And even if it's lowercase, we can still understand it because we set it to uppercase here. And what it does is it reads until we get a comma. So after the comma, we should be able to get an integer back, 0 to 255, preferably. And then when there's a carriage return, a new line, we go to output the power. If the direction is forwards, we set 1 to high and 2 to low. And we set the enable pin with analog right to whatever we got back from the power. And then 
if it's reverse or anything other than F actually we can do the reverse and set low and then high and again we set the power and just to confirm I'm saying Roger you can say yes thank you <laughs> yes sir okay so we do F and then 100 it will set it to 100 we do F to 0 to stop it and then we can do reverse 50 Now if you really want to manage high voltages then you need one of these boards and the advantage with these boards is it's got extra circuitry that handles the current a little bit better but as you can see it's got a big heat sink because the power going through makes things hot and it needs to dissipate that heat. This is the L293 board and if you've got a really high powered need then you can upgrade to something like this which can handle like an uh, electric scooter or go-kart motor this is very very beefy so there are a lot of motor drivers out there a lot of options you don't have to just use the chips you don't have to use a transistor or a MOSFET you can handle very high voltages the pinouts on these are very similar to the actual chip itself. We're supplying 12 volts and ground. And then yellow is enable. And we've got input 1 and input 2. And these outputs go to the motors. So this output goes to motor 1. So it's pin 1 and pin 2 which could be high or low, 5 volt and ground. And then on the other side you can have a second motor. And you would use those as the inputs. 